In this video, we're going to be introducing a new convergence test called the ratio test. Um, one way to think about the ratio test is it sort of generalizes the um, geometric series. In the geometric series, we had a common ratio, um, meaning that if I took um, the next term divided by the previous term, I was always getting some constant r um, that represented the common ratio for that geometric series. In the ratio test, we'll look at the ratio of consecutive terms and then look at what happens to that ratio as n goes to infinity. So that ratio won't always be a constant. It'll be something in terms of n whose limit we can take. So here's the, the statement of the, uh, the ratio test. So there's going to be three pieces here. The ratio test says that if the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n is equal to a finite number L that's less than 1, okay, then the series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, is an absolutely convergent series. Okay. Oops. It is absolutely convergent, meaning, of course, that it also converges. Okay, so we can say and therefore convergent. So we're going to see that the ratio test actually involves looking at some absolute values of the terms. So it won't um, be possible for something to converge conditionally by the ratio test. It'll turn out that it can only converge absolutely or um, diverge by the ratio test. So let's look at this other condition here. If you find that that limit of the ratio of the terms, the limit as n goes to infinity, of a n plus 1 over a n is equal to some value here that's bigger than 1. Okay, so it could be a finite number that's bigger than 1, or you could have ended up with infinity for this limit. Then that tells us that our sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n diverges or is divergent. Okay. So notice that there's one um, case that we haven't talked about he yet here. We've said, okay, if the limit that we get of the ratio of the terms in absolute value is smaller than 1, we get convergence. If that limit is bigger than 1, it diverges. So what can we say if the limit equals 1? Well, if the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n is equal to 1, then we actually don't know anything. Okay, so if you end up with this limit of the ratio of terms being ratio of the terms being equal to one, we have to use a different test. So we say that the ratio test in this case is inconclusive. Okay, that means we need another test. So the ratio test, you know, it looks looks like it will be very nice to use, but it's not going to work for all of our different series. Okay, so let's make a couple of notes about our ratio test. So for what kind of series is the ratio test going to be helpful? Well, we're going to see that the ratio test is particularly useful for series with the nth term containing the following types of things. So containing exponentials. Okay, so think of something sort of like a geometric series. So when we say exponentials, we're thinking of things like 2 to the n, 5 to the n, negative 3 to the n plus 1, that kind of thing, a number to an n, or containing perhaps factorials, okay, or some of those exponentials, um, let's say exponentials times a power of n. Okay, if we just have powers of n though, um, the ratio test will not work. That'll be our, our next note. And we'll have a little discussion about factorial notation. Just to um, give a quick reminder, factorials are where you have that exclamation point. So you have something like 3 factorial, that means 3 times 2 times 1. Or we could have things with n factorial or n plus 1 factorial. So we'll review that notation in just a minute. 
So the other note that I wanted to make here, if the ratio test is good for series that have exponentials or factorials or exponentials times the power of n, ratio test does not work with P series type series. Okay, so if you have just um, powers of n involved, the ratio test is going to end up giving you 1 for the limit. Okay, which is why if you have a p-series type, um, something that's maybe not exactly a p-series, but you have a sum of some kind of powers of n divided by powers of n, that's when you want to use the comparison test. Okay, so for example here I can note that like the sum of 1 over n squared and the sum of 1 over n both give 1 in the ratio test, okay, meaning you get the, um, the limit of those, the ratio of those consecutive terms is 1, but we know that this series here, the sum of 1 over n, diverges, and this series here converges, so that shows you how getting 1 for the limit in the ratio test doesn't tell you whether your series actually converges or diverges. Okay, so one final note here that I mentioned before, a series cannot converge conditionally by the ratio test. Okay, because because the ratio test involves looking at the sum of the absolute value. Here we've got absolute value bars around our ratio, so we're, we're already looking at that. So either the sum of the absolute value will converge or it will diverge. It's not going to be possible by the ratio test to have the sum of the ANs um, converging, but the sum of the absolute value of the ANs diverging. If the sum of the absolute value converges um, according to the, the ratio test there, then your original thing then converges. And if the sum of that absolute value diverges, then your series using the ratio test diverges. Okay. So we can never say something converges conditionally by the ratio test. The ratio test will always indicate that our series is either absolutely convergent or divergent. So one note on factorial notation that we're going to see come up. When we see this n exclamation point notation and factorial, this means I take each number and multiply it times the integer 1 smaller all the way till we get down to 1. Okay, so n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, etc. times 3 times 2 times 1. So for some examples, you could have something like 5 factorial. That means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which happens to equal 120. I could also have things like expressions in terms of n inside my factorial. So I could have n plus 1 factorial, or let me do a little bit bigger value here, something like n plus 3 factorial. So that's n plus 3 times n plus 2 times n plus 1. And then it would be times n factorial, okay, times everything that I just wrote up here. Oftentimes we're going to see in the ratio test we're going to have to simplify something with some factorial notation. So just to show an example of how that might work, let's say I had something like 2n minus 1 factorial divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. Okay, now I'd want to write out what some of this means here, 2n minus 1 factorial is smaller, so I'm going to just leave that as 2n minus 1 factorial. But 2n plus 1 factorial would mean 2n plus 1 times this value here that's 1 less, so that would be 2n, and then times 2n minus 1, and then we'd keep going, so that would actually be 2n minus 1 factorial. So these terms would cancel, and this would just simplify to 1 over 2n plus 1 and 2n. Okay. So that gives you an overview of the ratio test. Um, continue watching to see some examples where we apply the ratio test.